Hi, and welcome to New Every Day. My name is Carrie. And my name's Jen. And on today's show, we're in part two of Shattering Loneliness. So stay tuned. Everyone, thank you for tuning back into New Every Day. So glad that you've tuned in. Um, last week we talked about shattering loneliness. And Jen, can you just give a, a quick recap of what we talked about? Yes, I can. We talked how this concept of soulmates yes. has, has risen up out of what Plato uh, had written about in a play and how basically human beings had been divided and so men and women looked their entire life yes. for someone, that one person to complete them. Mm. And how um, so often people struggle with finding that right person, that, yeah. that person who's going to complete them. And yet the, the way the gospel is set up is for us to actually find our completeness in meeting Jesus. Right. We talked about James uh, 4, 8 last week that said, uh, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Like mm -hmm. there's this idea of when we actually seek out God, he will come and meet with us. Yeah. And it's only when we find that completeness through Jesus Christ do we feel whole. And what's interesting is Blaise Pascal uh, talked about how we have this God-shaped spot in our heart that only he can fill through the power of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, uh, so that's where we uh, stopped last week was basically setting up this idea of there seems to be in our culture this desire to find that right person. Yeah. And yet we are, I want to say, looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> <laughs> so many songs. So many songs talk yeah. about finding that one and you complete me. And and um, and I just listened to uh, a Backstreet Boys song because it was yeah. on Facebook. And it's like, as long as you love me, right? Like, it's like, it doesn't matter who you are or what you've done, as long as you love me. And I'm like, wait a sec. What does that even mean? Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so I have been thinking a lot about the concept of loneliness and it's different than being alone per se. Right. Um, because you can be in a room full of people and be alone mm -hmm. and you can be married and you can be alone. Mm -hmm. And so often we put too much expectation on other people to fulfill our need of companionship. Yes. If I could just find that right person, if I could just have that conversation. Yeah. Um, and I think people, if they want to show that kind of re resilience or self-reliance saying I don't need someone else, yes. then you can kind of see how they fill it with other things, yes. even if it's busyness with activities yes, or busyness with work. Yeah. So that, that hunger and that desire for being in communion with someone else in a meaningful way yeah. doesn't kind of show its face. Right. And it's interesting because those things always seem to fade, right? Like it says the, that song, you know, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. But the things of this earth, they, they fall apart because yeah. they're material. And you know, there's always a bigger boat. There's always a better car. Like I just took my car in to get serviced and I'm replacing the transmission again because it just doesn't last. Yeah. Like things aren't made to last. And yet Jesus said, you know, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And it says from everlasting to everlasting, he is God. So he there's forever. No, there's no ending to this. And so we, our culture struggles so much with filling that void of companionship. And we look for it in all the wrong places when really we need to be looking to the word of God. Hmm and to fill that with Jesus. Yes, I heard one preacher say that Jesus is the perpetual novelty. Mm. You don't need to be looking from place to place because the relationship you experience with him is so rich yes. and, and so um, diverse mm -hmm. even from the way one person experiences him to the way another person experiences him. And yet there's like this communion that there's family. 
Yeah. So we kind of alluded to the fact that um, part of the reason people are seeking this companionship or this soulmate is to have someone else who knows them. Yes. Who really can say, yeah, no, no mm -hmm. one knows me like my boyfriend or no one knows me like my spouse. Yes. And yet God says that he knows us and we can yes. know him. And, yep. and I like the verse that says, you know, what, when, when we are in heaven with God, then we'll have an understanding of him and we will know him even as we're fully known. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 13. Yeah. And I agree, like, there's this desire to be known. As an individual. As an individual. And yet we are great. And God fulfills that need in community. Because he says that he looked at us and he said, it's not good for man to be alone. So there's this idea of companionship. And that comes from the idea of, tr of the Trinity. Like the oh, fact that it's yeah, Father, yeah. Son, and Holy Spirit. And even though it's one God, there are three essence. And, and they... Um, I never thought of that. And the way they function is almost like a dance, right? So they just... So they have this really cool relationship that we don't get. So we're not even going to try to even go there. Um, but the relationship that they have com completes, fulfills, um, sort of lets the other one lead and then lets the other, it, it's a dance, it's a dance. And so here we are and we look at, at, he looks at Adam and he's like, whoa, there's only one of you. There needs to be two, hmm. right? It is not good for man to be alone. And so I love the fact that David catches a glimpse of this, King David, in Psalm 139. And, and, and this goes back to that idea of anyone can experience loneliness whether you're rich or poor, whether you're single or married, uh, whether you are employed or not employed, like you can have the best job in the world but still feel alone. Yeah. And so here's King David. He's a king. He's a king. And like the, the girls said, you know, went before him dancing, saying, Saul has killed his thousands, but David, he's like... He's, he's like this crazy war, like yeah. a very successful um, man of war, but also had like wealth and he had a massive family yeah lots of wives lots of wives uh probably probably not a good idea probably not a, a good idea ball. to meet your alone needs is finding a new wife that is not the answer no <laughs> um but here he is uh in psalm 139 so i i'm reading from niv and mm -hmm. what are you reading from this is the new living translation um and so here he is uh, in Psalm 139 and just pouring out this idea of, I want to say, like, he catches the essence of the fact that God understands loneliness. And this is, in my opinion, the answer to those times when we're really just struggling. Uh, do you see me? Do you know me? Do you even understand what I'm going through? Like, are you there? And then you need to zoom into one 39. So we're actually going to break it up into about three different portions um, because we just want to mm -hmm. um, dive right in. So I'm going to start reading from Psalm 139. It says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. You hem me in behind and before you have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. So I think I'll just, I'll stop there for now. Mm. Because there's so many, um, I want to say so many God verbs in there, right? You have searched me. You know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. Mm. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. You know it completely, all of the words on my tongue. You hem me in. You have laid your hand upon me. Like there's this idea of David has not done anything to be before the Lord. Like this is all about... He's just acknowledging. He's saying what's true. Yes. You know what's interesting is the fact that he touches on the different aspects of what makes us human mm -hmm. and the different ways that we experience life and relationship as a human. So, um, you've examined my heart, and you know everything about me. Mm -hmm. You've searched me, and you still know me. You know when I sit down or when I stand up, when I go out or when I rest at home. So, like, 
our physical interactions, yeah. right? You know my thoughts from afar off, so our, our, our mental self. Yeah. That we often say, no one knows how I think or feel. Yeah. Your heart and your mind. Yeah, right? and it's, now my version says, you perceive my thoughts from afar. And I read one commentator who said, you know, even though God is in heaven, he knows our thoughts here. And I was like, but he's very present, so that doesn't even make sense. But then I read another commentator who said um, that when, when it says, you perceive my thoughts from afar, it's like before they are even complete in yes. their finished form, yes. he knows them. Yes, because you, you know what I'm going to say. So your words are a thought before they come out. Yes. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. I know. So then that's our other way of expressing and, and knowing each other is verbally, right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that word discerning, what do you have at the beginning of verse 3? You, you have discern? Uh, you see me when I travel and when I rest at home. Okay. What's interesting about this word discerning is we often talk about in Christian circles of do you, you have, have the gift discernment. of discernment, yeah. right? And discernment is knowing right from wrong. Okay. So when I read that, it's like, Oh, you discern my going out and my lying down. Like, you know what is right and wrong. Right. The things I do right, the things I do wrong in my going out and my lying down. Like, that was, and when I thought about that, I was like, oh, like, he knows what mm -hmm. I have done mm -hmm. all day long. Mm -hmm. The good and the bad and stuff I'd rather not talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Yeah, exactly. And it says he discerns it, so he knows. Like, he knows the stuff that I've done, the good and the bad and the ugly. And yet it says, and then you are familiar with all my ways. And it's interesting because familiarity means you just know what somebody's going to do. And it's like, uh, Carrie and I have shared this space now for, for five years. And so she knows sometimes the things that I will do. Not that I've said them. But she but just I knows. just know from spending time with you. Yes. Yeah. And not that anything has taken place, but she'll she'll be able to say, okay, I, I know Jen will do this, this, and this, and I can do the same thing yeah. for Carrie. I can almost like say, oh, she's going to do this, and then this, and then this, and not that she's even gotten out of bed yet, <laughs> but because when you get to know people, you're just, you are familiar yes. with their ways. Yes. And so that phrase has actually challenged me to pray Dear Lord Jesus, I know that you are familiar with my ways. I know you know what I'm going to do. If my ways will lead me in ungodly paths today, yes. would you stop that? Because yes. you know, like you know, before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. You know my thoughts from afar. So if you are discerning my ways, if you are familiar with my ways, could you please put a Holy Spirit check in my spirit? Mm, there's a space for intervention. Yes. Yes, and so you can actually get up first thing in the morning and you can pray this prayer. Lord, you know me so well. Would you lead me not into temptation? Yes. Like, would your spirit actually come and just guide and direct me, you know, away from my familiar ways that are leading me to sin? Right, or if you stumble with, with your words, before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. Mm -hmm. And then you could pray also the other scripture that says, set a guard over my mouth that I might not sin against you. Yes. Yes, these are things we need to think about Yes, right after these messages. We'll be right back. Jeff Weston. Yeah, man. You're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? You need hosting. One of the things about a hosting account is you don't want to have limitations put on your website. It's true. How much hard drive space do you have? How many email accounts? How many domains can point to it? Well, we've got an amazing deal for you. For a very limited time, cat5.tv slash dreamhost. For just $5 and a bit of change per month, you are going to get unlimited website hosting, unlimited email accounts on that hosting uh, service. You are also going to receive a free domain name. Ooh. So your own .com. Nice. 
to put that amazing website that you've been working on it's on true. there. If you run, if you want to build a WordPress site, fine, sign up cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Just don't put Panama Papers on it. Just don't do it. But hey, uh, it's a great deal, folks. Best deal you're going to find. $5 and change per month. Go to cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you for staying tuned to New Every Day. Um, just wanted to say thank you to our partners. Go onto our website, neweveryday.tv. Check out our partners page and all of the people and organizations, companies that make this possible by donating um, to the Category 5 umbrella. Yes. And they make New Every Day possible. And yes. thank you to Robbie Ferguson, who also um, edits and produces this show. And we're so grateful that you've tuned in. And yes, we're so we grateful are. to talk about scripture and how it's real. And Jen, we're talking about how God knows us, yes. how he's omniscient or all-knowing. Yes. And the, the whole theme for these next few shows is the fact that God alone shatters loneliness. Yeah. And so the fact that you, you mentioned the passage from 1 Corinthians 13, but we will be fully known. Yeah. And we want to be known and so because god is omniscient all knowing there's something so special about being known because why i think it there's a, a caring like someone cares enough about me okay, yeah. to want to want to know me yeah um that they've put the time and effort into because you can't know someone unless you've spent time with them yeah right it's like um like I said in the last show, when you came home last week, I knew that you needed food for the next day yes. because there wasn't anything in the fridge. So I knew that. And I knew that if there wasn't, that you would be tempted to go and, and spend all my money on food. That isn't necessarily this is good and healthy. Good. <laughs> Anyways, but it's that knowing. It's And wow, do you feel special well, when that's, you're known. That's what I think it is, too. It's a value statement. Yes. I want to spend time with you, Jen, because I value your friendship. Yes. I want to know you, and I want to know what makes you happy. I want to know, you know, what makes you sad. Yeah. And truly know you just because you're valuable. Yes, and I agree. So when you apply that to God, it's like God knows me, desires to, knows me, to know me, and knows all about me because I am valuable. Yeah. It's not, when, when somebody says to the Lord, like, do you know Carrie? Do you know Jen? The answer is like, yes, let me tell you about them. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so there's nothing that is hidden mm -hmm. from him. Like, he, he knows us completely, completely, which is so unbelievable. And, and it's kind of interesting how... Um, and I think maybe this is a, a little bit of influence from like Eastern thought and like meditation and how we're supposed to be very introspective and to know yourself. And right. in the 70s, there was the movement, you need to go and find yourself. Right. Right. But what is the, what's the value in that and how much more meaningful is it for the Lord to know you and for you to acknowledge that you can't? know everything about yourself yes you know verse six says well verse five says you go before me and follow me you place your hand of blessing on my head mm. such knowledge is too wonderful for me too great for me to understand yeah we're never going to know ourselves so completely as the lord knows us yes and uh it says in verse five you hem me in uh which i always imagine a sewing machine whoop Making a seal <laughs> around us, you know, hemming us in. Yeah. Um, behind and before, you have laid your hand upon me. So when you get the picture, you hem me in. Yep. Behind and before, and you have laid your hand on, on me. And, and the image here is of a besieged city. Mm. And so when you think of a besieged city, that means they are hemmed in behind and before. There is no way out. Uh, and that is how close God is. But then we're also covered. So I want to say there's no, like, there's no place where we are not covered by the Lord. Because mm -hmm. this is you hem me in behind and before. You have put your hand of blessing upon me. And what is so like precious about that statement, because I spent a lot of time last week thinking about this statement of you hem me in behind and before. That means you have gone before me. 
You are coming behind me. You are walking beside me. And you are covering me from whatever might come. Hmm. Like just his, his knowing of what I'm doing and he is fully present right. in that. And it's a loving knowing. Yes. It's not like, a, oh, I know that. Oh, I saw that. Uh, you know? Yeah. It's a loving knowing. And it says that the love of God, his perfect love casts out fear. Yeah. Knowing that he's behind and before. It's yes. not like, oh, your dad's coming home, Carrie. You better pull up your socks. So it's, your dad's there. Yeah. He loves you. Yeah. And so when we say, you know, such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain, it doesn't matter how much I study. It doesn't matter how much I meditate and pray on the Word of God. It doesn't matter how many godly conversations I have. I will never know as much as God knows about myself, mm. about other people. And uh, I just sort of sit back and go, wow. Wow. Like you really do care. Like you really do. You really do know me. And I was sharing with Carrie. We had a, a prayer time at the church. And... It was in that time of setting aside that the Lord actually spoke to me things that I didn't even realize were there, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, God, you, you care about me that much that when I choose to set that time aside, you really are willing to meet with me and, and to show me those things that I'm struggling with because you know them. And you know where those things will lead if I continue to walk in them. And so I, I, I just praise God this morning that when we talk about shattering loneliness and how it's caught up with this idea of being known like God knows us completely. Mm. completely I think we better just stop there Jen because we could just keep going and going and maybe I'll just pray for us and then we're going to continue this conversation next week okay father thank you so much that you have made us and know us you know every hair on our head it's all numbered you know every single day that's coming and every word that's on our tongue, mm. even before it gets there. Thank you that you know the, the thoughts of our heart and, and you protect us before and behind and have laid your hand upon us. We don't even fully understand what that means, Lord. But I pray, God, that you'd help us to understand that. You'd help us to worship you as the one who knows everything. I thank you that you love and care for us. And I pray for the listeners or the viewers, mm. God, who maybe feel like nobody knows me, no one knows what I'm going through, no one can relate. God, you know them. And I pray that you would impress upon their heart the fact that you love them and you care about them. Mm -hmm. So we thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in to mm -hmm. episode two of Shattering Loneliness. And we're going to pick up this conversation next week, same time, same place. So come on back. See you then. Bye. Click, click. Thank you.